Yo, what up, guys? It's your boy, DJ J. Steezy. And DJ Jedi. And we are the Last Dope Podcast. Hey. Teases. Is in the mother hey. building. Hey. Yeah. Burr, 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 burr. Burr, burr, burr. <laughs> I'm back. So for y'all don't know, she was like our first guest that we put at like. Ever. I think like seven years ago. Yeah, ever. Seven Before years. COVID, guys, we were doing this shit. And in the before times. And, and she was actually doing this before. That's how I like I found out about her. Because I did, I did, you know, I did I do Google. like to yap. I did Google and I was like, is there any, like, I don't even think I, I did podcasts. I don't know what I searched. Uh, interviews in the Valley. People who won't shut up. Or, nah, nah, something with Asians. Maybe. You probably got one person and it was me. Yeah. I'm the only one here. So, so I was tripping out because even back then, you like, I was like, man, she's doing it. Like, I hadn't heard, I hadn't heard about it. I thought maybe because I was like a little older so i don't know if it was that kind of crowd but mm. it's just uh people didn't network like that back then here yeah. right? i don't know what that is i don't know like now there's a little bit more of like people networking like that but i feel like when i was doing it when i first started people were kind of like why are you trying so fucking hard because it's the valley and like it, even with content people were kind of like what are you why are you acting like you're a like a blogger in like la and i was like dude i'm just trying to live my life like chill out All like right. leave me alone yeah <laughs> let me live my life be nice and now yeah. i think people kind of understand that like it, the internet is important so now people are like oh shit i can like be a person on the internet right yeah. which is kind of cool you guys are doing it it's cool yeah, yeah. like remember when we were um I think it was mariachi night. We were out there, and they're like, people were like pointing at us. They're like, "Oh, those guys are YouTubers." Oh yeah, isn't that weird? We're going around with the what was it GoPro? Yeah, I didn't even think. No, back then they didn't even sell them at Best Buy yet. I had to go to a guitar center in San Diego. Dude, now you can buy them anywhere. Yeah, you could probably buy one at Dollar Tree. Probably. <laughs> But <laughs> Dollar Tree, I'm like, wait a minute, huh? <laughs> Yo, can I actually? Let me think about that. All right, for those that don't know, um, she has a connection with an, uh, the other world. Another world? How, how does that the, uh, identify? I don't know. I don't, honestly, I'm not sure. Um, I just, I can talk to dead people. I, that's like the easiest way that I can say that. Right. And I know that like freaks people out. But at the same time, it's like. I, I bet you there are probably people who can talk to dead people that don't know they're talking to dead people and they think it's just their, like, conscience or something. And I'm like, girl, mm -hmm. that's a dead person. That's a dead person. <laughs> Good luck with that. All right. Now, through your journey, you know, like, since you've been on the our show the very first time, you know, you were um, doing tarot. Um, oh, I did do that. And then you did... Um, <laughs> You were going through different transitions in your life. Yeah. All right. Um, elaborate on that. Oh, man. Uh, the last time I was here, yeah, I was like, I was doing tarot. I just started my business. Um, I had just, like, left a really crappy job. I don't even remember what else I was going through in my life at that point because it was all a blur and it was all gar hot garbage. But <laughs> now I think I look back on that time and I realize, like, a lot of people look at, like, when they were having like a chaotic life or when they're like figuring it out and they're like oh man that I wish I didn't do it that way or I wish that I I knew where I was going to be now and I did it different and I actually don't I don't wish that I don't have that wish I'm really like grateful for all the things that I learned and the things that I used to do now I don't do tarot now I don't even own my own business now I'm starting a new business actually <laughs> that has nothing to do with like spirituality and like spooky stuff and I just got married and like, Congratulations. <laughs> thank you um and I never really you know what I never thought I would get married straight up like <laughs> I just was like maybe I just don't ever do this <laughs> but at the same time like yeah I was like a pagan at that point and now I like I go to church and life life is just fucking different but you're not I, one of those dancers right like from the I mean, Netflix Oh what? my god, no. <laughs> Mom talk? The, oh, the, yeah, the, oh gosh, what's it called? The, like, cult of yes, dancers. Yes. Yeah, n no, no. Oh, cool. <laughs> no, thank you. We're not asking to bust a move. <laughs> no. <laughs> I did do dance when I was younger. Strike a pose. But yeah. absolutely not. Um, yeah, you're never going to catch me fucking dancing on the internet. Uh, I have morals. Okay, cool. <laughs> I have standards for myself in my life. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. I, like, 
you go through a lot of things, you learn who you are, and you learn who you're not, and then, I think you guys know this as, like, adults, it starts all over again. Then you wake up one day, and you're like, I don't know who I am again, <laughs> and then you have to figure it out again, so that's yeah. where I'm at. Right. That's what's up. Yeah. So, um, so you're a Christian now? Sort uh, of. Sort of. Yeah, it's just like... I still um, talk to dead people. I <laughs> Right. Um, because I know... I know um, you're not supposed to mix those two. Or yeah, it's 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 um, it's a touchy subject and it's um, it's a weird one also. Yeah, right. Because it's just like, but if it's a God given gift, what am I supposed to do? Am I, am I right? gonna tell God he's wrong <laughs> right? for giving yeah, me that it's, gift? It's like it's like, hey, here you're gonna you're gonna talk to dead people, you know? So yeah. it's like, and I think. At the same time, we have to embrace those gifts that we do get. Mm-hmm. I agree. So, um, as as you know, we've lately we've been talking about spirits and reincarnation, and I think it's so crazy that you guys have been doing that. And also, I'm so glad, <laughs> and I love that it's like so close to Halloween. Like what, yeah. Halloween's like next week, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. This, that's why I came dressed as a week. pumpkin. Yeah. Oh <laughs> that's why I was like, I need to come as a pumpkin. What's your take on reincarnation? Well, I'm a Taoist, so mm. I believe in reincarnation. Right. I believe that we. Well, actually, I believe more in the like everything, everywhere, all at once. So there's no past lives or future lives or whatever because they're all happening at one time. But I, as a Christian, even believe in like the God that existed before religion did. I believe in God that existed before words did. So before, before the Bible and I'm not a Bible literalist. I don't think everything in the Bible is true for us anymore. And I think that actually we can expand upon that. So then when we think about reincarnation, by the way, there's reincarnation in the Bible for those of you who don't know, (laughs) go research that. Um, But I think when it comes to reincarnation, we have to, as souls, continue to learn and grow and to experience the human experience and also the spiritual experience. So I do think that we reincarnate, but I also believe in dead people. I believe in ghosts. And I also believe that God speaks to us in many, many different ways. Some people like they can talk to ghosts. Some people are really good musicians. Some people are really good DJs. Some people are really good podcasters. Like that's the thing about God giving gifts is you have to recognize that you've been given them and not fight God on the fact that you have them and just kind of go with the flow of the plan of your life, which was God knew what God was doing when God made me and was like, that bitch is going to talk to ghosts. <laughs> <laughs> and here, here I am. Right. <laughs> so I, I think that's been a really important thing in my life of like how I learned who I was and who I wasn't. And that that's actually what brought me, I was raised in the church. Like a lot of people don't know this, but I was raised in a family that ran a church. And so then I was like, okay, well, I saw the problems in a church and I was like, well, this sucks. This is the worst. And I saw how the church treated people, especially down here. Um, It's like conservative and and it's it's a little rough down here. Um, And so then I was like a tarot reader and then whatever. And then I kind of was like, you know what? Maybe I should check out the whole Christianity thing. And then I kind of realized that actually to honor my ancestors was to go to church. And then to honor my ancestors and to honor myself and to honor what God gave me is to also talk about what's wrong in the church and continue continue to do what I do, which is be a fucking loud mouth who yaps. <laughs> <laughs> or just, you know, it, do you feel like, okay, we don't understand why you have these gifts, but do you have maybe some sort of light? Like, are they, is it like the movie Sixth Sense? Like they don't know they're dead or is it kind of like, I don't know. I don't, I, I, I don't even know how to ask the question. No, I know. Yeah. So, like, actually, it depends. It depends on the dead person. Like, if I've noticed that when people are, if they were, when they were alive, spiritual people, and they believed in the dead, once they're dead, they're like, yeah, I know what's happening. Mm. Or if they're just, like, deeply spiritual people, especially if they come from, like, cultures like that. So, like, Asian dead people Hispanic dead people, Latin dead people, black dead people that I usually have that my clients, their ancestors are from cultures where the dead are celebrated. Those dead people are like, yeah, I get it. This is not hard for me to be a dead person to give you a message to whatever. 
And then on the flip side, you have people who were not very spiritual who maybe didn't believe in ghosts or didn't believe in really anything that once they're dead, they're like, why are you bothering me? <laughs> they're like, what's happening? What's going on? So it's very much like you have to think of the person as they were when they were alive, and it'll tell you a lot about who they're going to be once they've passed. All right. Makes sense. Yeah. Two things I wanted to bring up. Uh, you can you can uh, help me out if you remember. I don't remember too much. Since you were like our first uh, interview that we put out, th- there was actually two versions that I had edited. I don't know if you remember. Oh, my God. <laughs> but we didn't put it. What was the difference? What was the difference of the oh two versions? Oh, my God. <laughs> were you like, do, here's do you a version remember? that makes this bitch look crazy, and then here's the version yeah. that is better. <laughs> That's when you barely had started fucking around with editing it. Yeah, like I had, oh was new to editing. <laughs> so it like was that all bad. Your sound effects. It was like, that bad yeah. that I had to like, yeah. If I find it, I swear I will send it to you, so you can judge me. Judge me. <laughs> judge me. <laughs> like, oh, this was terrible. Yeah. But then we went into the like, nah, we won't add. Like, you know how some, I guess I don't know if it gives or takes uh, yeah. when you watch a podcast or you watch an interview, like when they have like pictures or or. When they're talking, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. hey, I'm talking about a ghost a little, like, or a kid, and, and something stuff. pops up. Yeah, so I didn't want to. Uh, I, I don't know. I'll send People it to you. Don't you know scare. what I'm talking about? <laughs> and second, uh, I do have like this gift, but like you said, it's like I know it's there, but when it's happening, sometimes you don't know. Mm-hmm. It's just uh, I freeze up when I can't talk to someone because they're about to die. It's, yeah, it's happened to me like more than three or four times. And at, and while it's happening, like, it doesn't register. Like, of mm-hmm. course, the first two times, it's just by luck. You're like, oh, it's just a coincidence. But yeah. no, it's been a lot. So one of the last times that I, I know it happened, I felt so bad because it was one of my friend's um, dad. Mm. And I couldn't go talk to him. I couldn't go talk to him. And he was there. And th- we didn't have no, like, fallout or anything like that. It's just, like, I just felt so bad because I, like, I was just like, I, I can't. Like, I'm just, like, my body's just numb. and mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, like, I've experienced something like that. Um, I've gotten pushed off a ladder, like, here in the oh. in the front, like, washing the car, no wind, no nothing. And then it's just, like, boom, like, push. I don't like that. And uh, I don't know if you've experienced anything like that. Um, yeah, I actually, it's the first time I'm going to say this on here. I actually see the other side. Oh, you see stuff? Yeah. See, I don't see shit, and I'm glad for that. Okay. And <laughs> I'm like, don't give me that. Um, I've I've had old coworkers where I said, there's this person around you, and it looks like this, like this, like this, like this. And she's just, and she started crying. And Aww. she's like, she goes, that's my grandpa. Aww. You know? And um, I said, he wants you to take him. I don't know. It's like, I couldn't remember. It was a, it was a type of pan dulce. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. And he wants you to take it to him in front of in front of his picture. I go, this is what he's telling me to, you know, to tell you to do, you know, so you can honor him. Yeah. All right. So um, I don't know. For some reason, I feel like maybe everybody has a slight of something. I believe that. And, you know, if if you're intuitive and you you actually how can I say, go into it, mm-hmm. you will pick it up, right? It's a muscle. I Yeah, I, I definitely think that, like, everybody has a certain degree of being able to do it. It's I always say this to my clients. It's like, everybody can learn to paint. Like, everybody can go to the store and pick up paint and watch a Bob Ross video and learn, and learn to paint. Not everybody's going to be Picasso. That's just natural proclivity and talent, right? Like, that's just kind of what you're naturally able to do. But, like, everybody can put in the work to do something. And as far as science goes, like, they have only begun to discover what our freaking brains can do and what we can perceive and, like, how much we can put work into it. So I definitely believe that everybody, right, they have, like, different – and I think it's different based on, like, you as a person. Like, if you are a more visual person – you're going to see them. Right. I am, what's super funny for me is like, I love food. Everybody knows I love food. <laughs> um, and so whenever like dead people talk to me, a lot of the times, like they'll give me the taste of something that they want brought to their grave or wow. as like a reminder of um, 
like I had a friend who her great grandma passed and the first thing that I saw was like the crinkled or like I saw, but like I could smell, I could taste. And then I saw the crinkled wrapper of mazapan. Wow. And I was like, first of all, I'm allergic to peanuts. So this is kind of mean. Oh, <laughs> I was like rude guys. Uh, but I told her and she was like, oh, my grandma is the only person that I knew who could like, open mazapan without it crumbling into a billion pieces. And I was like, that's talent, actually. (laughs) That's really hard to do. Um, So that's just like kind of how it is. I I see some people who are my clients and they're learning to talk to the dead and they hear things because they're like auditory people. They love music. So like the dead give them messages in music more than they would for like they do for me with taste. And at the end of the day, it's like, because that muscle is part of you, just think about, how you naturally communicate to yourself what are your love languages and that's probably going to be how the dead talk to you because it's a like they're they're not going to deliver a message in a way that's going to waste their time or your time or their effort right does that make sense oh yeah yeah it does they have a little i mean they they're not no one's wasting time (laughs) nobody does anything for no reason god the dead people us animals like Everything has a purpose and a reason, and it's going to be done almost like to a point where it's so logical and easy that human beings, we overcomplicate it. Yeah, yeah I believe it. I do too. Or are they just, I don't know, maybe people just want to make it feel like it means much more than what it, it's something simple. You know? But that's, that's also humans. Yeah, well, and people think that like if the dead talk to them, it's going to be some crazy experience, and it's going to be like, I don't know if you guys are like too old for this, but like, do you remember the show That's So Raven? I remember the show, too old but for this. It's, I know it was on Disney Channel, right? Yeah, okay. Can I show my age? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so whenever she would have like a vision, she was like a psychic, her like, she would basically pause, like she couldn't walk, and it would be this like weird like vision tunnel the screen got all crazy and it was like this thing and people think that every time there's like you have a psychic experience it's going to be like Like that that. every single time and most of the time it's not and that would be really disruptive to your life Mm -hmm. and so a lot of people think that they don't have any type of gift or that nothing is happening spiritual or otherwise like i've seen this even in the church they're like god's not talking to me because they don't have this like crazy revelation like a beam of light comes from the sky and they see an angel and it's like god does things in a billion different ways the dead do things in a different in a different way you're gonna do it in a different way just like let it be what it is now believing in uh like christianity and the other side what about aliens I believe in aliens. Yeah! I believe in fucking aliens, dude. The aliens are out there. There's, uh, you know what? I watch too much Star Trek also to believe that, like, we as human beings are the only intelligent species. Because if that is true, I'm really afraid for the universe. Uh-huh. <laughs> I'm like, wow, if we're, if we're the smartest thing out there, that's really that's sad. Bad. That's yeah. bad. And, and we're not. And we're not. Oh, we're not. There's no the way that we no. are. And I'm actually praying and hoping that we're not. <laughs> <laughs> because that's going to make... All of the universe look really bad. Um, no, I believe I believe in aliens, and I believe in many different types of aliens. Interesting, like races. Yeah, I mean, I, the, there's <laughs> how many how many right. fucking planets are out there, and we th- right. and and galaxies or whatever. And I actually think that that is mildly biblical because in in the creation story, it says that God made the heavens and the earth, and all the heavenly hosts within them, and that means aliens. Right. Why do why do people think the heavenly host only means people or birds or fish? God made all the planets and all of the things in the world. So it's like when I tell people, it's like, what about the Anunnakis? Have you heard of the Anunnaki? I have, but I have a problem. Okay. <laughs> I do have a little bit of a problem because I believe that aliens exist. At the same time, some, and this is like a thing actually that the spiritual community taught me, which was to recognize like where old white people have kind of influenced how we think about things. Because oh God, they have a fence too, <laughs> don't they? Well, well because wow, whatever. <laughs> well, they're offended. No, well, because it's like either, it's either the aliens existed and they're off kind of doing their own thing and they're not really, it's not that they're not fucking with us, but they're kind of keeping their, their distance, which don't blame you guys. Are they on this earth behind the ice wall? 
or or they're behind the ice wall. Uh, but also, it's like I have a problem with like ancient aliens, right? Where it's like, oh, the ancient Egyptians could not have accomplished this thing unless aliens helped them, and it's like people were that complex and advanced. Human, the human race was also pretty advanced in certain civilizations. So mm-hmm. it's kind of like fucked up to think that because these quote unquote like savage civilizations could not have done something unless the aliens helped them. It's like, okay, let's just be a little, be a little bit better about that. At the same time, I do believe that there are moments in history that have been influenced by aliens. Right. Okay. I mean, if you were like, okay, it's not going to happen, but unfree is a caveman. Like they're like, how do you explain Wi-Fi? <laughs> like, okay, like, so like, oh, they're like, oh, there's, there's some aliens out here. Like, <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying too, right? Like, this is my favorite genre actually of meme is like, what is going to send a Victorian child into like a coma? And it's like, mm-hmm. ex- yeah, explain to them Wi-Fi. Explain to them like Mickey Mouse. Oh. Explain to a Victorian child just Disneyland. They'd be like, what the fuck are you talking about? Right. Explain to them Uber. DoorDash. DoorDash, yeah. Aliens. Explain, explain like, iPhones and stuff. like Beeper? A beeper. <laughs> I never had a beeper, but... Nah, he's ancient. Right? <laughs> this is the ancient alien, actually. <laughs> no, but I just think that is super funny because we do think about things that we have now. And, like, like I said, I watch a lot of Star Trek. And, like, in Star Trek, they're talking about, like, oh, in the future, we're going to have handheld computers and whatever and like right. we'll be able to like communicate with somebody from across miles and miles and it's like okay that's my iphone so true yeah true just like the microwave mm-hmm. right it's um it's crazy um now i, I believe it's it was president carter i think it was carter that jimmy jimothy yeah, that he made a pact with other, you know, other Aliens? beans. Yeah. I don't know. That was, that was, uh, Jay-Z. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's no. why he's dope forever. <laughs> <laughs> no, but what I'm saying is that, that he, made, he made. Right, Carter, but He made Carter. a deal. <laughs> he made a deal for, for aliens to actually, um, do research on us in exchange for technology. And they say that that crash at Roswell, there was that whole spacecraft was full of fiber optic, right? And that's how that's how we got internet, you know, through these fiber optic wires. And you know what? Well, fuck you, aliens, for giving <laughs> us internet because that has actually single handedly ruined society. Yeah, it or, really has. Or or they crash. They got a DUI. <laughs> <laughs> And they're like, hey, just give us your shit and we'll let you go. <laughs> it was a bribe. Uh, okay, Shut okay. <laughs> you know what? That's more plausible. Yeah. Right. That's really funny. But I really have heard of that story that, you know, Carter did that. But uh, anything's possible. You know what? And to me, I think sometimes like all of these stories, people get so caught up in these and I don't care. And this is why I don't care. Because at the end of the day, now we're stuck with internet. Yeah. <laughs> like how does that help me it doesn't yeah. now i need to navigate tiktok and, right and then you mm. got to go to try to f- fact check everything and it's like <sighs> you yeah. can't say anything people are yeah. gonna be like wow what are you saying in private no i just mean literally you can't say anything because uh, i just saw this thing the other day that was like oh i'm gonna tweet that i love waffles and then someone's gonna be like wow this is really problematic what about all of us who hate waffles and like i've never had a waffle in my life because i'm gluten intolerant i was like dude fuck <laughs> off <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Again, let me live. Right. So. Uh, that was my rant <laughs> on waffles on well, the internet. There you now, go. what about, okay. Waffles with nuts. <laughs> she can't. But she's allergic. Okay, of course, you know, you search. I everything. am allergic to nuts, actually. <laughs> when, you, when you search something, of course, then ads start popping up. Right. Well, now but, I'm going to get 50 fucking ads for a waffle maker. Right. <laughs> because so, they heard me say it. <laughs> but the thing is, it's happened to where you. I, I didn't even say it, but I thought it. it. You know, it was a thought in my head. And then all of a sudden, it was just like I started seeing ads for it. Yeah. And I was like, what the fuck? Yeah. I don't like that. So, so I'm not the only one. Yeah. No, but I am easily influenced. And every once in a while, I'm like, 
fuck it, I'll buy it. <laughs> and then it's the worst thing I've ever bought. Like, ah. And now I have a tiny microphone in my house. <laughs> oh, shit. Now I have a tiny USB microphone. So, so talk to us a little bit about your new uh, business. Oh, no. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> what if I was like, no, I'm never going to do that. Um, I realized, actually, it's really cool because how I was talking to you guys about earlier, like the internet and how it's like everybody's on the internet now. Um, I have started, well, I'm starting a business where I help people learn how to do their social media, like figure out their strategy. That's dope. It's hard these days. It's hard out here for a pimp because everyone's on the internet now. Everyone's selling this. Everybody has a podcast. Everybody's whatever. And so a lot of people who own businesses, they create content, whatever, they sit around and because they're not getting the views or the sales or the whatever that they want to get, they, they're like, am I not supposed to be doing this? Do I suck? Like, mm. does this mean that I'm bad at it? And it's like, no, it doesn't mean you're bad at it. It means you need to know how to prove to people that you're good. Right. It's not a question of you. It's more of the question of like, how do you get people to actually look at your stuff and stay there and then be like, I trust you. Let me give you my time or my money or whatever. And that's dope. Yeah, I mean, I spent... 10 fucking years doing that. And I learned like a lot of stuff about it. And I think people want to do that thing where they, they want to just do their job without selling their soul to the internet and dancing on TikTok mm-hmm. when they don't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> like, and I don't want to do that or yeah. whatever, you know, like and these weird trends and whatever. And it's like, you don't have to be, you don't have to embarrass yourself on the internet to be successful. And you also, I think, need to define what success is for yourself that's my my big thing is like people want to go viral people want eight million followers and they want whatever and i'm like dude as long as you can fucking pay your bills and you're proud of what you put out you be happy right that's done it. yeah so uh i know it's probably hard in the beginning to because they want like expectations or they want like to meet something like really quick but yeah also talk about um like, let's say they're, they're going pretty good, pretty good, pretty good, and then they just stay here. Because mm-hmm. that's something where we were at, and we didn't understand why. I don't know. Maybe it was a copyright strike for music that was in the background. But, oh. but sometimes we don't know. Like, today we posted something, and I didn't get a notification. So it's just like, dude, are we, are we like shadow band? Shadow band. That's something? not a real thing. Okay, so we're not like shareable. <laughs> or I don't know what you want to call it. Well, not in a bad way, but like I think sometimes people like get used to what they see from you. And then mm. it's not that they're not interested in you and that they don't like you, but it's more like people now have really short attention spans and we're always wanting to be entertained. Mm-hmm. So if you, it's kind of like if you show the same episode of something every time. Right. If you just put on the same off, uh, like the same episode of The Office on a loop, eventually your brain tunes it out, mm. and you're like, let me just scroll on my phone at the same time or whatever. And it's the same thing with like content and clips and and stuff like that, where you just have to figure out like, okay, what is everybody interested in? How do you present that in a more interesting way? And then also, I'm sure like you guys get bored with posting the same thing that looks the same all the time and whatever. So like, also it should be fun for you. Do like dumb shit like experiment and i think also maybe people want to see more of your personalities than they are seeing i know that's like counterintuitive that people are always oh "Oh." that makes sense that's why i I tell him we have a gift of being like naturally stupid we should do that while we're djing (laughs) you should (laughs) stupid as in dope Mm. dope as in like back in the day we said that was cool yeah, no. <laughs> when people say go stupid, that's what they mean. Yeah, yeah. See? Yeah. see? I know a thing or two. <laughs> or five. You were just talking about it's so raven, so I was like, I don't know. She's <laughs> I'm cultured. <laughs> oh, okay, all right. But I, 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 I get what you're saying because we we kind of switched it up mm. with the ghost stories and with with all that, and we saw a significant jump. Yeah, not right. in a bad way, but like after yeah. a while, I also kind of stopped. I, like I would like your guys' stuff, but um, I like I wouldn't turn on turn down my volume on my TV to like watch your clips. Same. But then when you guys were, <laughs> like you're same. like same, <laughs> yeah. But then when you guys started doing the ghost stuff, just because it was like kind of controversial and it's different than what you guys do, and it's not just because I like ghost stories. Actually, I I don't because they freak me out. Um, <laughs> but I started watching you guys more, so I think it's like 
do the things that interest you because to show that you are versatile will show that you guys are people. Right. You're human beings with interests and you're not just dudes behind a mic. Yeah. Or a computer. Like when we did the reaction video too, the the, oh, fight. the fight, the wedding fight, the wedding yeah. fight, yeah, that that, cool. that got significant traction also, and it was just like, it was like it's like stuff we talk about behind the scenes. Yeah. We're always like sending. I'm sure like normal people just send memes or dumb shit to friends all the time, all day, every yeah. day. We do that shit, but we never really put it out there. And I'm like, I'm glad we finally did it. Like it's it's fun. Yeah, it's I'm glad you did too. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna continue doing it, you know, because it's um. I gotta say, at the end of the day, it's fun. It's fun. Yeah. It's um, it shows that you are real people, and then also like if we're coming out this from like a marketing standard, people want to see not just your product, but like the lifestyle around your product. So they love that you guys are actually friends, and that you guys do friend things like send each other fucking memes and bullshit, and like you know like the. The ones that you guys are doing, we're talking about the ghost stories, reminds me of, like, when I would be at, like, my friend's kickback, and there's only, like, six of us left, and some of us are a little baked, or, like, we're just a little bit tipsy, and we're like, you guys ever think about aliens? And then somebody, like, over there in, like, a lawn chair is like, yes, oh, my God, I think about aliens every day. And you're like, wow, okay. Be the of Scotty. Yeah, really. You're like, I just learned something new about you. So do more of that, because... What you're actually, what people are investing is not is not just what you're talking about, like the content and the people you're interviewing, but yeah. they they want to feel like they're here with you, right? So be people about that. All right. So when we send each other money back and forth on Venmo, <laughs> our our little tags are like for last night or for <laughs> good head or what bullshit like that. But we have to put it on private because I don't want to get in trouble. <laughs> okay, you know what? And that's a good idea because every once in a while I go on my Venmo and I look at my friends and I just kind of look at what they're sending. <laughs> and, and so if somebody just says the word like stuff and then like a snowflake, I'm like, bitch, I know what you bought. <laughs> oh, Girl, I know what stuff is. Oh, oh man. Let it go. I know what stuff is. <laughs> or like someone, so he, this is how one of my friends got caught up cheating because oh. he sent somebody else like this girl venmo and it just said pizza last night and his girlfriend was like you said you were with your boys what do you why did you send this bitch pizza money yeah. from last night and i was like girl yeah. <laughs> i was being i was being a good samaritan and i was i was like oh, trying I, to be I, a so, good friend yeah somebody was asking for pizza she so said was, she was hungry <laughs> no damn <laughs> damn no, I just send him eggplants. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? That's really funny, though, because, like, if you just send it to your, like, platonic friend that you're just, like, a dumbass with, and you're just, like, five eggplants, Damn. and it's $4, <laughs> <laughs> it's great. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, <laughs> shit. But, um... Hey, so what? What else is up? Are you are you here, local? I don't, I don't know. I live here now. Like, I don't know your I story. Moved. Where have yeah. you been? And you talk about it. I've been everywhere. Is there a statute of limitation? That's what I'm trying to know. No. <laughs> oh, wow. No, there's not a statute of limitation. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Cool. She's good, guys. She's good. I'm good. It's fine. It's all legal. Um, no, I, li- I, I lived in Costa Mesa in Orange County Okay. Um, for like four years. My now husband, current boyfriend at that time, we met when I was a witch and we met online and whatever and then we we met each other and we're like I think I want to do my life with you not to sound like a youth pastor come do life with us um but like we're like oh I think we want to like do life together wait did he get a reading my husband from you oh all the time well here's the deal now is like now that we're married his fucking dead people won't leave me alone are they like exes no, his grand, oh, his grand so no. No. <laughs> I'm like, whoa. <laughs> well, I, I gotta ask. They're I'd gonna like, wanna know. Bitch, I, no, I would be like, girl, what's the tea? <laughs> what do I need to know? Um, no. So we, we lived in Costa Mesa in like one of the most expensive places because at that time I was doing really good in my business. I had opened another business, an LLC. Um, and then, you know, I went from doing tarot to I kind of put that away. And then I was a medium and then I was a mentor. I taught other psychics how to be psychics. And then mm-hmm. after that, I was like, oh, we should do classes because nobody was doing that. And it was like, I hate to be like, it was like Hogwarts. It wasn't because that's dumb. 
but <laughs> <laughs> it was kind of like um, like workshops, like really industry professionals who like had their shit down. We rotated teachers. Like I was basically running a school and that was really cool. Um, but then we had like interpersonal conflicts with some of the people that we worked with and it, it was rough. So we ended up like, I had to basically, I burnt out cause I was doing a lot of work. I was running like three businesses at one time, which is Damn. insane for somebody who was my age. I was like 20, 24 or 25, like it, like girl bossing way too close to the sun, like right up under it. <laughs> it was hot. <laughs> and then of course, hot down here. Yeah, well, it was hot in a different way. It was <laughs> pressure. And oh, okay. It was like a, like a pressure cooker. And especially because we chose to live in Orange County, which was where my business partner moved. So I moved there basically for her. And I was like, okay, like, this is going to be easier. It was harder because it's expensive. It's so expensive up there. And, of course, part of my, like, girl bossing was because I didn't want to live in the Valley because it's mm-hmm. hard to be one of three Asian people living in the Valley and doing something that, like, you know, the Valley is a conservative Christian environment. Like, I, I call it the baby Bible belt for <laughs> <laughs> many reasons. <laughs> the baby Bible belt. And it kind of is. It's like a little mini Bible belt. And... I think that there was a little bit of me also not really appreciating what the Valley could give you, which is now that we live here, actually, I appreciate it a lot. I love it here. Other than the fact that it's a little hot, (laughs) it is a little hot and maybe there's not enough like Asian food for me to be happy, (laughs) but whatever. We've got a couple new spots. And um, when I lived up there, I went through some stuff and I was like, look, I can't work anymore. My husband, God bless him. He got a good job and he supported us for a little bit, but then they turned out to be bad. And then we both had great, like my grandma and my grandpa both died within three years and my mom got cancer. And so we had just like a lot of stuff going on. Our lives changed, our values changed, our money, our income changed. And we were like, you know what? Let's just, let's just be closer to family. Let's move here. Everything, the cost of living is lower. My mom is amazing. She's letting us live with her. And also because she's never there and she's older, we're helping her with her diet and exercise. And um, we're getting our feet back on the ground. My husband has a job now. I'm starting my company, doing something that actually is not going to make me feel like I want to scream every two minutes. And now we're kind of really like actually settling in. I think there's this thing that happens when like, life just takes you through the coals and and the ringer that you just have to stop and be like, what is actually important to me? What is important? And to me now it's like my marriage, my family. And can I look at myself in the mirror at night and be like, I'm, I'm proud of what I'm doing. And that's where I'm at. Oh yeah. So now I live here and I'm doing that but we kind of want to move. <laughs> well, we want to move. No, well, we want to move to Philly because we went, his family's from Philly. That's why. We That's what I was, was going to ask you. I was, just like, I was like, all of a sudden you guys, you became a Philly fan. I was like, had to be the husband. No. Yeah. My <laughs> husband is like Philly. Uh, we went for his sister's wedding a couple weeks or like a month ago, maybe now. And let me tell you, his accent came back so fast. And then probably within like three, Three days of me living there, I started saying water. Oh. I was like, ah, oh, fuck. <laughs> it started. <laughs> so I'm a, I'm a big Phillies girl. He's trying to get me to like hockey, but we'll see. <laughs> That's a little fast for me. I am I am here for the violence, though. Oh, okay. Gotcha. I'm, I'm here for the fighting. Okay. So, um, well, yeah. he, he's been to hockey now. Yeah. You like hockey? It's, how can I say I was, we talked about it last time, and... In person, it's just. I heard it's crazy. It's it's fucking awesome. Yeah, so. I'm down. I never thought I would like baseball, and then we went to a couple of Phillies games, and it was great. I was like, man. Well, we got the minor league team here in um in India. Really? Yeah, there's a it's the Akishur Arena. Oh. So it's a, it's the Firebirds. So you got to you got to check them out. Go Birds. Yeah, so I'm down for that. It's also Eagle season. I know. She said she just said no birds. <laughs> I've actually been indoctrinated. Yeah, you have. <laughs> no, it's actually so funny because when we went, his family was like, I think you're like, you've got like, you've got the Philly in you. Um, mm. And that was one of the things when we first started dating. His grandpa, his dead grandpa, the ghosts, one of his, his ghosts were like, ask him how it feels to be 
dating a Philly girl in California. <laughs> that I just like am basically from Philly at this point. So it's fine. We know who I was meant to be with. <laughs> That's crazy yeah. because like, yeah, I, I wouldn't even have thought to ask you that. Uh, if you talk to someone like your husband's family. Mm-hmm. Is that weird for him? Was that weird for him? No. No? No, and I think that because he is also a very spiritual person that it it wasn't weird for him. And I I am really grateful that I don't have to, like, sit and explain to him spiritual stuff. Mm-hmm. We're on the same page with pretty much everything, except for he doesn't talk to dead people because he's like, I don't care about all that. <laughs> like, And I think that would freak him out a little bit more, but... Like, we went through the same journey from, like, paganism to Christianity at the same time. Um, Our grandparents died around the same time, and we both were kind of, like, at funerals and churches, and we were like, man, this is, like, kind of life-changing, and we had to, like, really look at our lives. So it's weird because sometimes I sit there and I'm like, you know, you're, like, your dead grandma's just like rolling around and he's like, I know she's so annoying. So like that's, <laughs> that's part of it. When we went for his sister's wedding, we were staying at their family. It's like little, they go to the Jersey shore for, for like summer and whatever. They have like a, a beach house that his grandpa like rebuilt. And for the wedding, there's this like random balloon floating around, like out of nowhere. After all the balloons were gone, we thought we got them all. And there was this one silver balloon. And somebody else said, oh, it's your grandma, Jerry, which is like, she's the the ghost that really talks to me the most out of his family. And I was like, oh, okay. I didn't have to say that. I didn't have to say that it was grandma, Jerry. And sometimes that balloon, I swear to you, within the four days that we were there, just would pop up in random places. Ooh. It would like, one day it like floated down the stairs. I was like, okay, that's creepy and weird. One day I opened the bathroom. It was just there. Just in the bathroom. And I'm like, oh. Jerry, cool. <laughs> Girl, get her out. Get her get out. out. <laughs> I have to go to the bathroom. Yeah. yeah. I was like, I have to pee. Can you like leave? Um, but it was also kind of cool that like yeah. nobody was confused. Everyone was like, of course the dead lady is here. And of course, like if I said something, everyone was like, yeah, that's how she was. So <laughs> that's good confirmation for me too, to know that I've still, I still got it. So go, going to Philly, now is Gino's the spot for Philly cheesesteak? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> no. Okay, so the 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 fight is between Pat's and Gino's, mm-hmm. and apparently, according to my husband, it's neither. Um, I, I forgot what the place is, but, like, if you see Cheese Whiz on a Philly cheesesteak, that is not authentic. It's provolone. Mm. I was like, huh. Good to know, because the way that they really, like, Sell that to you. Right. Yeah. Everything I always see, it's like the cheese whiz and then the peppers and whatever. And then on a hoagie roll, and it's like, no, you have to have, you have to have wherever this other place is at. But not Pat's, not Gino's. Don't go there. Okay. Unless you want to be a tourist. Then go there. <laughs> That's fine. Um, man. So, um, so with your new business, and then we also see you um, cooking. So yeah, is that something you want to dive into also? Food. Well, I know. Yeah, we I all get food. hungry, but hungry. like maybe a channel <laughs> somehow, or or like on no, Instagram. No, I mean I, I am always surrounded by foodies. My best friend Antonio. I don't know if you guys you see him on on all my stuff, whatever. He um he's a chef, and I started writing a food column for one of the local papers because I'm a good writer. I do love food. I'm never going to be a chef. I don't have the energy to, like, learn knife skills. And, like, I'm not going through culinary school. One of my friends is going through culinary school, and she told me about her final. And I was like, I don't want to cry over a croissant. Oh, <laughs> That's, like, wow. really scary. <laughs> I don't want to do that. So I don't think I'm going to start a channel. But I do think that the Valley has such a rich food culture and, like, everything in the valley or like a lot of people in the valley gather around food right like i'm sure like you guys both have like big family memories that are like at a family party with like food Food. so same thing with the dead people right they always talk to me about food and i think that's like such a big thing for me as like an asian person and then like my white family that adopted me they love like they love food they taught me to cook and like i have a cherokee grandma and she was like 
straight up from Arkansas. Like, it, food is everywhere. So I think it's really important that people know that there's good food in the valley and that people are putting in work into their food, but nobody talks about it here. If you were to tell somebody that you went out, like, in San Diego and you're like, I'm from Raleigh and we have this really good spot for this and this, they would be like, is it really that good? Mm. You know? Right. After we lived in Orange County, my husband came here and he had food at an <laughs> unnamed place. Okay. And he said that was the best food. It was like a Mexican food spot. Mm. You can edit this out. It was Okay. And he was like, that's the best food I think I've ever had. And then we were here for like three more months and he was like, that wasn't the best food I'd ever had. (laughs) (laughs) He's like, now it's not the best food. But he was talking about how like, you can tell that like those recipes are just like somebody's like Nana who like passed those down. And Mm -hmm. like there's real people working in the back instead of this like Chipotle bullshit, whatever. So that was one reason why I like am starting more food content is because I want people to read the articles that I write, which I'm not, I'm not writing anymore, but, <laughs> but okay. maybe I will. I don't know. Um, I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't pay good. That's the other problem mm. too, is like, dude, to be an artist, you got to be a little broke. Very what true. The starving artist. Starving artist. Yeah. yeah but I, I actually tell the starving is not something I like. No, she <laughs> likes to eat guys. I like to eat food. <laughs> it's like a real problem. How was it? How was his transition to the Valley? God, I hate him. <laughs> he liked it. Oh, really? We moved here, and he's like, I like that everything is slow. I like that people actually take care of each other, and they know each other. We went to a couple, like, events or whatever, and, like, I would walk in, and people would be like, oh, my God, TJ, are, do you live here again? And he's like, oh, people, like, actually know each other here. And I was like, yeah, mm-hmm. it's kind of a problem. <laughs> <laughs> like, That's yeah. one way to put it. It's a lot. Um <laughs> But, and and that was the thing too, is like when we started going to church, like we went to a church that my grandpa was the pastor at. And then other people that went to that church I went to high school with, or like people my mom went to high school with, or people my mom taught as a teacher. And he, he really liked that because I guess like Philly is a small town in a big city. That's what they say. It's like small town vibes. Um, And he likes that California is a little bit slower. He is fine with like the hot sun. He's a ginger, which is really funny. I was like... You're going to need, like, SPF 100. Oh, my God. 1,000. <laughs> no, okay, but well we, we learned, apparently, that he can tan. Oh. So I was like, oh, okay, cool. Um, great, you were built for this place. So, you know, now he drives a truck, mm. and he's ready for cattle haul. And <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. Did he get his first pair of Red Wings? No, but that's what I'm going to get him for Christmas. Oh. <laughs> All right, we'll put this after Christmas. You know what? No, but he, he is a boot guy. Like, he already had, um, or, like, like a hefty shoe guy. And he has, like, the, the Doc Martin boots oh, and stuff. Perfect. He's, like, a rugged, like, heavy metal, like, in the dirt type of dude anyway. So it wasn't a big shift in his personality. I just maybe was hoping that we would get here, and he would be like, this isn't my favorite, but nope. No, he loves it. <laughs> Sorry. He likes it. I know. I'm like, great, cool. That's fine. We'll just <laughs> be here forever. <laughs> um, um, I'm sure he misses his family, too. He does miss his family. There's a lot more younger people in his family than in my family. My family is all older people, so that's one of the reasons why we want to move. But at the same time, he loves here that it's like people care about the relationships that they, they have. Like, yeah. there is no... I don't fuck with you. I'm never speaking to you ever again. You can't do that here. You you literally can't. Yeah. There's only so many people. <laughs> like it's not like you could just like throw people away or whatever. And he also likes that here in the valley there is such a culture of like family. There like we've gone to a couple family parties and he's like, "Wow, everybody like makes it a point to like get get together and really be a part of each other's lives." And I love that he's like that. I mean, I'm sappy. I love uh, I love love. It's gross and it's, gross. <laughs> it's disgusting. Who are you? I know. I'm like, what, what, what I think she was abducted by aliens. I, <laughs> I've been replaced by an alien, actually, oh, a clone. This is AI. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually that freaks me out more than the dead people and more than aliens. AI, AI, AI. robots. Yeah, that, that's creepy. I can't do it. I've seen too many movies 
with with AI where that goes wrong. When I use Chat GPT, I always say like please and thank you, in case she becomes sentient oh. and comes after us. Oh wow. I'm like, girl. I never thought of it. <laughs> I always say, like, thank you. <laughs> she's like, no problem. So if she ever becomes aware, she's not killing me. Mm. <laughs> if you guys don't say please and thank you, she's coming after you before she comes after me. Oh, wow. All right. Yeah. Please and thank you. <laughs> please. Always. Thank you, Chat GPT. <laughs> I call her Chatty. Chatty? That's her name. Shout yeah. her out. Chatty. Shout yeah. out Chatty. Hashtag. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of people right now who are like very against AI. And I am I am against AI in the way that like don't don't let AI do your job. Like if your job is to be a writer, don't don't tell AI to write your stuff. <laughs> don't right. do that. Um But like as a person, AI can be really helpful. I just did this thing. I don't know if you guys have do you guys know what chronotypes are? What? A chron- what? Okay, so this is not an alien thing. Okay. <laughs> your chronotype is based on your sleep schedule. Mm-hmm. So your sleep determines your circadian rhythm, which determines like your digestion, your energy levels through the day, like all of that stuff. So I figured out my chronotype and I told ChatGPT my chronotype and I was like, give me a schedule, excuse me, based on my chronotype. I, and my chronotype, I wake up kind of early. And so about like two o'clock, my energy, it dips. Mm. So she told me the best time to eat to maintain my energy so that once two o'clock rolls around, I'm not completely crashed. She'll tell you when your best workout time is versus when your best like email sending time is. And when your brain is ready to maybe engage in creative activities versus like logistical scheduling meal prep whatever like that type of stuff so if you are like neurodivergent chat gpt is kind of going to be your best friend oh uh, i'm gonna definitely look into that i'm a morning person too i don't, I'm, I might be a little bit more morning uh, uh yeah <laughs> i'm about like 4 four thirty in the morning cannot relate <laughs> i don't even know what four o'clock in the morning looks like unless i've uh, stayed up stayed until up like, four in the like, morning. like on my days off i'm still like automatic and and i'm and i'm up and like within two hours i'm hungry do you think that is because of your like job no because even before like in junior high or before that i remember my dad leaving like four thirty-five. to and go you were work, already up and i would wake up because i would hear my mom like making him food and like she would make tortillas from scratch so all you hear oh so it's and trauma I'm just like uh but then i just got used to waking up that early yeah you're better than me you're good people oh <laughs> no but I, I enjoy being up in the morning like i i love it i love it i do like to be up in the morning when i'm up in the morning because then i feel like i have the rest of my day mm-hmm. but then you have to get up in the <laughs> what? But then you have to get up in the morning. Oh. <laughs> then you have to be wow. awake in the morning. Yeah. I think with me, um, yeah, I can I can go to sleep at two, three in the morning, but I'm up by seven. No matter what. Like Damn. My my body says get up. It's um it's crazy. That must be what it's like to be old then. Oh, oh wow! I've, I've always felt old, so yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. No, I get it. Well, not really. No, she's not. Okay, yeah, we don't care. No, dude, I'm gonna be thirty this year, and I'm scared. Oh, why? What else is gonna happen to my body when I turn twenty five? Nobody told me when you turn twenty five, you wake up the next morning and you're like, "Why does my back feel like this?" Uh, at twenty five. Oh, at thirty, like if you had any injuries when you were small. When it gets cold, is you're gonna feel them. Yeah. Is that when people are like, "I know it's gonna rain because my, my knee hurts." After yeah. forty, forget it. It's just. Yeah. Well, I don't have that problem to think about. I always oh, tell oh. my husband, I'm like, "Hee hee ha ha," because he's like, it? he's gonna be thirty. He might be thirty seven, or he's gonna be thirty seven. Okay. We're we really don't keep track of that. Okay. Um, because I'm bad with numbers just in general, but I do tell him. Pretty much every day. I'm like, well, you're closer to 40 than I am. <laughs> yeah. He's hey, like, okay. Now, now, as you've uh, had this journey with the ghosts, like, have you seen, is, is there something that's changed there too, like, throughout the years? Like, is it a different type of ghost? Or 
I mean, I know everyone's different, but like, do you notice more? Yeah, like I, I hope that they're not getting more violent and shit. Like you that. know what? <laughs> I've never had a violent ghost. Oh, um, that's good. When I was younger and when I went to art school, I was say when I was in college. That wasn't real college. It was art school. Um, when I was in art school, I did have a couple like weird encounters. I like woke up one day in the middle of the night and I heard this like weird noise, like a, like a, Ugh! and then my I had a at the end of my bed like a makeup box that was open and it just slammed shut. And I was like, okay, I'm just going to go back to sleep. Like, I just kind of pulled my covers over my head, and I was like, I'm done with this. Um, and then every once in a while, maybe, like, something will fall off a counter mm. or or whatever. But the more I've become spiritually aware, the more that I have trusted in God and also my own dead people that are around to really just, like, have a good good boundary. And that came with having better boundaries as a person, like, as a human being. Um, so now the dead people, like I've never had a, a violent one. Every once in a while I get somebody else's ancestors who are like aggressive. Mm -hmm. You know, you just like know people who are aggressive people right. and they're just like abrasive human beings. But now what the dead people talk to me about are like just real human shit. <laughs> like it's actually gotten more and more, human it's gotten more and more relatable it's gotten more and more like figure out what's important to you and then helping other people realize that like I had this rule when I was a reader and I still have this rule like don't talk to me about your love problems don't mm -hmm. ask me don't be like can I have a tarot reading for if this guy is going to propose to me I'm going to be like you maybe should go to therapy <laughs> uh, that was dope. And, and figure out why you're asking a psychic yeah. this <laughs> and why are you insecure in your relationship and like why are you focused on marriage and not just making your relationship better as it is right now in this moment and whatever whatever so yeah why I think <laughs> well, maybe not. I don't know. Um, but that, again, is like a boundary thing. So I'm glad that my relationship to the dead has actually gotten a lot more focused in in the way of practical human advice. Mm. At the same time, I think that it gets less showy as time goes on, right? It's less cool. It's less... Right spooky feeling which has been part of why i was like i'm not gonna do this as my job anymore i don't want this to be my whole identity you, you ever run into someone that claimed but you can tell they were faking it that's not my place to judge uh, i've never looked for that information that okay. doesn't help me as a person i don't go to well that's not true it's not that i don't go to other people to talk to my dead people i get enough of my own dead people that when i see see friends who are also psychics i'm like how are you doing like okay. what is your life like and and whatever but um i do kn i do see people on the internet like now you can't be on tiktok or uh, facebook or instagram without somebody reading cards mm -hmm. or being like hello beloved oh shit i have felt <laughs> your energy and i need to give you a message and at the end of the day you can kind of just tell when somebody is out for money and also when they don't, if they don't know you and they're telling you stuff about you, that's weird just because it's like, what, what are you trying to do here? So I can tell when people are faking it in the way of like, they're faking their motivations, right. but it's not my place to know whether or not somebody is actually talking to spirits because that doesn't do anything for me. If they are. I don't want to talk to those spirits that you're talking to. <laughs> I don't need your message. If they're not, then your integrity at the end of the day as like a person and as a business person is not something that I want around me. All right. Now, how old were you when you first encountered the spiritual side and be like, oh, shit? I think I was like, I want to say like 12. Oh, wow. I, I was 12-ish when I felt like there was dead people around me when I was like, I don't know. I think ghosts are around me. I, whatever I, it wasn't until I was maybe 1920 when I had the vocabulary to articulate. And when I was exposed to enough things to be like, Oh, people are doing this. So there is a way to understand it and a way to explain it to other people. Because at the end of the day, like when I was 12, I was like, this is just creepy. <laughs> You know, you just, like, feel weird. 
the right. vibes are off. Yeah, there's some stuff that still has happened to us uh, that I, I still haven't put out there, maybe won't put out there, because it's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot. Yeah, well, and then, like, I think that's the thing, too, is, like, people have those big experiences where it's, like, a lot for them, and if you don't have the words or if you weren't raised in a household where, like, everybody talked about that, you mm. you don't know how to talk about it to yourself. So it really changes your brain chemistry to a certain extent. It changes how you view yourself, the world, what you trust, what you don't. And so you don't talk about it. Uh, now, are you are you doing podcasts again? Or uh... no, but you can have me on more. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I do want to do a podcast for my new business because I think as a person, I work really well talking, like conversations with people. I've always said that. Uh, my husband and I had a really good podcast about like witchcraft and magic when we were doing that because we were the type of people to be like, this is bullshit. Please stop. <laughs> Please stop doing whatever the fuck you're doing. Stop it. Um, Cause you know, you know, all these people doing like weird shit. They find these like cool words and then they just kind of string them together and they're like, this is what's happening. And you're like, no. I'm enchanted. Yeah. Or you're like, am I ascending? My ears are ringing. No, you're dehydrated. <laughs> Drink some water. Yeah. You said I'm enchanted. I'm enchanted. You're not. <laughs> you're not. You're, drunk. you're malnourished and you're, you're drunk. drunk. <laughs> you're drunk and you haven't had anything to eat today. <laughs> so I do want to do more podcasts. Um, I I love content creation. I think it is such a good way to express yourself. Back in the day, the only way that you could express yourself was like painting or writing a book, which I don't have the patience for, and all this other bullshit where it's like some people can really just sit in front of a camera and put on a mic and they like thrive like right. that. Yeah. I think you guys have found a really good rhythm with it. Thank you. So good job. Yay. High fives. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> I think one of my very first, one of my first experiences was in Calipat. Right. That place is haunted as hell. Oh, yeah. Calipat is like a vortex and, of craziness. Um, it's actually a church right, astri- right across the street from the park. It's a white church. I was uh, telling my husband today uh, on the way over here, I was like, you cannot pay me money to live next to a church. Because that's haunted. Yeah. So my experience was, okay, so you walk to the, you walk in, there's the hallway. Mm-hmm. It's because my aunt had a birthday, not a birthday, um, she had a baby shower there in the, in the hall. Right, so the hall's to the left, and the church is to the right, and it's a hallway. And in between, there's like some stairs that go up, and it's like the restroom, and mm-hmm. and it takes you out to the back or whatever. So um, I remember it's me and my cousins, and we go get our food, and there's um, there's benches in the hallway, so we're sitting down, and we look towards the church side, and did you see someone sitting there? No, there's double doors, right? And all of a sudden, the double doors just widely just open. No. And then they close. Count me out. And then they open again. It's like, whatever this spirit, this entity was, it was fucking with us. Right? Yeah, because, he's like, hee hee yeah, seriously, No, seriously. <laughs> and it was just like, and then they would open and they close, open and close. So me and my cousin were like, he goes, you go. And I said, no, I'm not going to go. It's probably <laughs> the wind. Go. And so we're going back and forth, right? He says, I'm not going to go. You go. I was like, all right, we'll go together. And so we start walking. You throw and, then, <laughs> and literally, literally the doors are open. Like, yeah, come in. He's right? like, come on. Right. And so and we go and we look. And nothing. We're, like, we're like, okay, maybe it's the wind. Nothing. Yes, and for, and so for, then, between so, four walls, so the we, wind. Yeah, so we walk. We walk. You know, we're young. We walk back and we sit down. And it's just like, and they close again. And there's like, they're just like. Open, close, open, close. It's just like. This is my deal is like when they show all these ghost shows and things like that happen and everyone's like, oh my God, this is so scary. I'm like, dude, if I was a dead person, I would fuck with you so fucking hard. (laughs) I would just be a jerk. Like just to be funny. I'm not trying to scare anybody, but I would just be like, let me open this door and then let me close it and let me open it and let me close it. Like that's why when people are like, oh, was it really a ghost? Because it's not scary and threatening. I'm like, think about if you were a ghost. This is how I would fuck with you. I'd open the fridge, close the fridge. Exactly, the fridge, right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 100%. <laughs> <laughs> I would turn on your TV oh. onto something awful that you hate. Oh. And then I would turn it off. 
and then I would turn it on, and I would put it back on something awful that you hate. And when and you're trying to change it, it just move the remote. Yeah, just one inch. That oh. me as a ghost, actually, every day I would move everything a quarter of an inch. Just <laughs> <laughs> maybe um. you'd notice, maybe you wouldn't. Yeah, so he whatever that that was, it was just it was just fucking with us. And then now going into the hallway, it was just like, all right, I need to go to the restroom. So I'm going to the restroom, and you had to push the door, right? I pushed the door, and literally something behind just like slammed the door back, like in my face. Yeah, don't like that. And that's just rude. And that, and on that one, I got, I was just like, it was like a ice bucket over my body yeah so, i don't like that yes yeah, so i was just like it wasn't a homeless guy <laughs> <laughs> i don't know <laughs> that's fucked yeah. up yeah so <laughs> I mean, I, but i think that was that don't was gaslight of, him out of his ghost experience <laughs> right sorry, sorry i don't want to offend, I don't don't offend ghost mean. but that was that was one of my very first experiences ever you know witnessing something like that and i was just why is like, it always in a bathroom why why is that you know what? You're right because I've heard a lot of stories at children's hospital that there are people in the restrooms. One of my first ghost experiences was I was in the bathroom at Palmer Auditorium and somebody just flushed the toilet next to me and no one was there. And I was like, great. That's cool. Yeah, I've heard a lot of stories about Palmer Auditorium. Palmer's yeah. haunted as fuck. It's super haunted. Mm -hmm. Super duper. Also the science yeah. building. Also just all of Palmer or all of the high school. Oh, there's the Arnold Palmer. <laughs> like the Arnold drink. Palmer, the man. Go to a golf course. So who's down to go do him. our own ghost adventures? Yeah. Oh. I have to find an Affliction t-shirt. <laughs> GoPro cams and everything. <laughs> I need to find some EVP, everything. an Affliction t-shirt <laughs> and a shitty voice recorder. Mm. And then I'll be down. Yeah. Do you guys know I was actually interviewed multiple times to do a ghost TV show that it aired on Hulu. I didn't do it. They didn't pick me, but really? Yeah. Kristen Stewart produced like a gay ghost hunting show because I, because they found out that I was bi and that I'm like a, a ghost bitch. So they interviewed me. I made it through like five rounds. Uh, oh, wow. I, I went to the final <laughs> round of casting and I think they didn't pick me because I was the person who was like, if something crazy happens, I'm going to be the first person to be like, it's not that crazy. <laughs> It's really not that crazy. And I think they wanted somebody to be like screaming and running away. <laughs> I was like, it's not me. <laughs> not me. But I was almost on TV. So that's hey. my claim to fame. I mean, it's still possible. I so, hope not. Then I know you, you, well, you, you've seen us <laughs> talk still about now. Me on TV. <laughs> urban legends here in the Valley. What are, what are your experiences here in the Valley as far as like urban legends go? <sighs> I mean, the ones at, at the high school... I will confirm because I've I've been there and I'm I feel the vibes. Um the like the one on Malin or the, on Dogwood, mm -hmm. I've not experienced that. It is creepy out there. There is a vibe. There's for sure something. I've never had anything happen to me and I hope that me saying this out loud doesn't mean that the ghosts are going to be like, <laughs> "Oh, what if we just fucked with her?" Um please don't. But I have not had a lot of things happen in terms of like valley urban legends like that but i also don't seek them out because i don't fuck with the dead um they go through their own shit they've got enough things to deal with that i'm not gonna go out there looking for them in that way like it's just um they're bothered enough you've got all these like dumb little high school kids you know that are going out trying to like be crazy so i don't know if you wanted me to be like, I've done this and I saw them, it's not, I know. It's not that crazy. 